Hey, after looking at some of the photos that you submitted over the last couple days, I realized I should have told you a couple things. After you've uh, slipped and scored and melded all the features on your animal, spend a lot of time with your sponge refining the surfaces of your animal. Pick it up, smooth the bottom, smooth the legs, smooth the face, smooth everything even before you start adding the texture. You want a really nice smooth surface, really refined surface before you start carving and adding things in. And even if you've done your carving, spend a lot of time smoothing this thing so that the surfaces really are um, not rough, not messy. Uh, they really and truly look smooth and streamlined and, and look their best. Um, take Honestly, it could take five minutes, five, six, seven, eight minutes of smoothing will really go a long way to making this look good. Uh, I also wanna remind you uh, about what I showed you on day three about poking holes in the head. I know that you probably already did this, but in case you didn't do it, you need to do it. Take your toothpick and um, where you know you're gonna hit hollow air, poke two or three or even four holes up through the bottom, somewhere we won't see them, and just make sure that that air that's trapped inside the head can escape. It's really important that when we fire this thing that the head does not blow up off your animal. That would be pretty tragic. So now that we've poked holes in the head and made sure the head isn't going to blow up, now we need to cut the lid in your lidded jar so that the air that's trapped inside the belly of your animal can escape and so that part won't blow up. So I'm using my toothpick to first just map out where my cut is going to be. It's a pretty big belly on my honey badger, so I can make a fairly big opening in my pot. And actually what I end up drawing here is not that big of an opening. You can make the, the, the lid and the opening bigger on your animal if you have more room. So I just first wanted to map it out. Now I'm gonna take this plastic knife, and because my clay is in the leather hard stage, I can cut through the clay fairly well. You can see how the clay is kind of moving with me as I'm doing the cutting. Now, if your clay is too hard and dry, you might have to use an actual sharp knife to do this cutting. Uh, and if, in, if you do have to do that, please, please be cautious. Please be really, really careful. Um, hopefully your clay is soft enough where the plastic knife will do the job for you. Now notice how I'm holding the plastic knife at a 45 degree angle. That angle is really, really important. As I cut, I'm maintaining that 45 degree angle because if I cut it at that angle, the lid won't fall in. It will make the lid fitted so it won't shift, it won't move around. So that 45 degree angle kind of takes a lot of thought and a lot of careful hand holding, but it's really, really important. So all the way around, maintain that 45 degree angle. And uh, notice I'm also using the knife like a small saw. I'm just using very small in and out, in and out movements. And uh, by doing that, I'm making the tiniest, tiniest little incremental cuts, which is the safest way to do this. Don't hack at it. Um, be very cautious, very careful. Pretend you're a surgeon and you wanna be really delicate on your animal patient. Yay, the lid came off, excellent. So notice there's the seam where my pinch pots came together. I'm gonna have to fix that in a little bit. Notice the angle, the 45 degree angle that's on the lid and there's a matching angle on the, um, the lip of the actual pot. So those two 45 degree angles are gonna come together really nicely to make my lid fitted. And so I now have this really rough kind of saw texture around where I did my cut. So I'm gonna spend some time with my, uh, with my thumb, fingertips, just doing some hand smoothing of that carved area. You could also use your sponge, but your finger is just gonna do a quicker, more um, thorough job of smoothing that away. And with the added benefit of it's not gonna make it sticky, because if you put the lid on when it's sticky, your lid will get stuck. So smooth up that edge that you just cut. That'll take a little bit of time to just go back and forth over that edge and really make it smooth. And then you're gonna have to meld the interior seams of your pinch pot because you weren't able to meld them before. You weren't able to access it when you were putting your two pinch pots together. So meld what you can reach with your fingertip. And then on the inside there where your fingers may not reach, for that melding, you can either use the butt end of your fork, the non-business end of your fork, 
or even better, your popsicle stick. The popsicle stick will go, do a good job of reaching in and melding what you can't reach with your fingers. If you can do it with your fingers, great. Um, but just meld what you can. Um, the parts you can't see or reach because they're kind of underneath, um, just get those by feel as best you can. But you really wanna make this inside be as strong and as smooth as you possibly can. So once you've finished melding the, uh, the inside and you finish melding the uh, upper edge of the pot, you're also going to have to do a little bit of smoothing and melding on the lid and making that all nice and neat. Oh, yep, look inside my honey badger. Oh, looking good. Um, so just take a little bit of time again two, three, four, five minutes, like spend a little time with it, and use your fingertips to smooth away that zigzaggedy texture that you got from doing your carving. And um, use your fingertips, use a sponge, but if you use a sponge, remember you're softening the clay, and there's a chance that when you put the lid on to test it and see if it fits, uh, that it will actually stick. So um, do as much melding and smoothing <coughs> as you can with your fingertips, which is kind of a dry sort of melding, dry kind of smoothing and cleaning. Get as much as you can with your fingertips so you can put the lid on, you can test it, you can move it, you can make sure that lid does truly still fit. If it doesn't fit, alter what you need to alter. And then when you feel like you know the lid fits really well, uh, then you can take a sponge to it and smooth it with a little bit of uh, moisture to really smooth it the rest of the way. Fixing my little handle there. You can see why we wanted to attach the handle yesterday so that the handle is strong enough to pick up the lid because it would be really hard to pick up this lid if it didn't have a handle on it. So now do any final checks, final tests and tweaks and movement and carving and smoothing and refining that you might need to on your animal because cutting the lid is almost the last step. So I'm gonna have you do some final, final finishing touches next week, uh, but that's it for what you're going to do today. Now when you wrap your animal up for today, here's what I want you to do, especially after you might have smoothed the lid and smoothed the part where you cut the lid off. Take a piece of tissue, like a Kleenex, and put it between your lid and the, the hole that you cut. This will keep your lid from getting stuck uh, as the, the animal sits overnight or over the weekend. Um, that way you can put the lid on and it's not gonna roll around and fall off and get broken, but it's also not gonna get stuck in place. So just a little um, tissue Kleenex. And then we're gonna be done with the paper towel now. We're gonna let our animals slowly kind of move to that leather hard or beyond leather hard stage. So just bag it up tight, no wet paper towel needed. And um, that is the way that I want you to wrap it up uh, for the weekend. Please don't forget as always to do a good job cleaning up after yourself and uh, I showed you how to do that yesterday. Here's a reminder of how to do it today. Uh, really get in that good habit of cleaning up after yourself every single day. And then you're gonna snap a photo of your progress for the day once you've cut your lid off and upload that for your points today. That's it, VLA kids. I'm gonna see you at our Google Meet and we'll chat about next steps.